I've got a question. How expensive was your current smartphone? Some people will say $600. You might have managed to get one for $400. Some people might even say $100. But what almost nobody will have said is $20. And that is where KaiOS and PuffinOS come in, two completely new platforms that are about to try and change mobile phones forever. So today, I'm collabing with Tech Altar to find out if either of them have a chance. He'll be focusing on PuffinOS in his video, and I'll be focusing on KaiOS in mine. Watch both, and let us know in the description below which one you think has a better chance. So, right here, I'm going to answer the three big questions. Number one, how KaiOS has created a completely new category of devices. Number two, the tricks that KaiOS uses to be able to work seamlessly even on low-end phones. And number three, how KaiOS is catching up with Android. Now, you probably already know, we can roughly sort mobile phones into three categories. You've got cell phones that can just make calls or send texts, feature phones based on Java or equivalent, and then smartphones that might run Android or iOS. There are three billion people in the world who have no access at all to the internet. They might have a cell phone or a feature phone and be able to call and text, but there's no way they could fork out $100 for an Android phone. But KaiOS is bridging that gap rapidly, and I've actually managed to get hold of one of these devices right here. So let me show you how. Okay, so this is the Nokia 8810. Inside the box, you've got the phone on top, but also a pair of pretty cheap looking earphones. You've got a 1,500 milliamp hour battery and also a micro USB charger. So the phone itself, and when you pick this thing up and start to use it, some things become very apparent very quickly. It is super comfortable and light, and I like the fact that you can turn the screen on and off with this sliding mechanism there. Plus it has 4G and that is just the start. You've got Google Maps, which is a little finicky here compared to on a large touchscreen, but everything works. I can sit down and plot a route from Nottingham to London and get step-by-step -step instructions on how to get there. Which, think about it, for someone who's never had a smartphone and who's just spent 20 to $30 on something like this is incredible. It's got a YouTube app, which is pretty much the mobile website, but videos load without issues and the actual speed is better than you'd expect. And maybe the most important addition with KaiOS is Google Assistant. It does pretty much always direct you to the browser, but that's enough. It's enough for you to learn more about something that you're interested in, and it's enough for it to solve maths problems for you. It's not as jazzy as its Android counterpart, but you'd be surprised how well it keeps up in terms of speed. Plus, one of the biggest ways that KaiOS devices have managed to save costs is by opting out of using a touchscreen. And whilst the caveat is that is potentially fiddly typing on one of those numerical keypads, Google Assistant pretty much solves the problem. Say you're about to type a message to someone. Instead, you can just hold the middle button and dictate it. And because that computing is actually being done by Google's text-to-speak engine and not some built-in proprietary one, it is just as fast as if you were to do it on the Galaxy S10. Plus, KaiOS generally is super fast. Because it's built with hardware limitations in mind, performance is one of the only priorities. Downloading apps takes two seconds and booting them up something similar. If you think about it, it's really impressive that KaiOS was able to build a proper ecosystem like this. Especially when more established players like Samsung, like Microsoft and BlackBerry have all failed to get their own platforms off the ground. So, I'm going to hand it over to Tech Altar now to explain the tricks that KaiOS has used to really get their OS to take off. If you think about it, a new platform like KaiOS really faces two key challenges. One, it has to work with very little processing power, because of course it is built for cheap devices with very cheap components. And two, it needs an app ecosystem. But of course in 2019, it is very difficult to convince app developers of all sorts to port their apps over to a new platform, as Windows Phone, BlackBerry, and many others have proven. So instead of having its own native app platform, KaiOS runs web apps, which most app developers already have. But KaiOS only allows the most optimized ones into its app store. So those would be the apps that actually offload most of the heavy duty processing tasks to cloud servers instead of running them on the devices themselves. So for example, Google Maps planning routes on a web server, or Google Assistant doing natural language processing on a web server, for example. With 4G connections becoming reliable and cheap even in developing countries, KaiOS is betting on the fact that even cheap devices can finally start taking advantage of the cloud infrastructure. So with this really smart software strategy, KaiOS is making feature phones really intelligent. But you might still be wondering how this relatively simple operating system is starting to catch up with Android. So back to you, Aaron. 
You might remember an OS called Firefox OS, a completely new operating system built by Mozilla for smartphones, tablets, and even TVs. KaiOS is actually using DNA from Firefox when that project was discontinued, but there's a specific reason why this is taking off when that failed. You see, on the Mr. Who's the Boss channel, we've already talked about a whole bunch of alternative OSs. Samsung's Bada, Google's Fuchsia, and Huawei's Hongmeng. And whenever someone has asked the question, can this thing become the next main smartphone OS? The answer is always maybe, but probably not. Every single smartphone OS, by its very definition, is going to be compared to Android and iOS, two competitors that are seemingly so far ahead that it's almost impossible for a third party to come in and compete. But KaiOS isn't pitching itself as a smartphone operating system, even though they have got potential to steal market share from Android, as there will be some people who'll be choosing between the two. Because KaiOS is hitting a price point that Android couldn't possibly get to, it doesn't actually need to be as good, because they've created this entirely new category of semi-smartphones at the price of, frankly, a dumb phone, there's very little competition here. And if the theory wasn't enough, the numbers back it up. We first started seeing KaiOS in 2017, and now it is on over 100 million phones. If you think about that figure for a second, in terms of percentage growth, that is far beyond what Android is and ever was. The second thing in favor of KaiOS is that updates are coming in fast. And the kind of updates we're talking about, they're much more dramatic changes than just adjusting how icons look or introducing a dark mode. The phone has already picked up support for Facebook and Twitter and just recently WhatsApp too. I'm pretty sure it's just a matter of time before we start getting Instagram, Uber, Spotify, and with this you can start to see that KaiOS is not just another piece of software, it is a potential lifestyle accelerator. Especially in developing countries, this thing would be giving people access to a completely new way of living. And that brings me on to the third thing, that is sustainability. KaiOS is different. It has an app store, just like all those other operating systems that have failed in the past, but unlike them, it already has the user base to support it. By pitching itself to this almost uncontested market, KaiOS has managed to rack up over 100 million users, and that itself is the biggest hurdle. The current quantity of apps is pretty slim, but because they have that user base, the incentive for developers to now come on board and make more stuff is already pretty strong. And that's all cemented by a fairly intuitive Kai ads system that can monetize their apps for them. So you've got loads of users who are hungry for content and loads of developers who are ready to start making it. All the ingredients are here for a really bright future. But one thing I would say is that the future of an operating system like this is a little uncertain. Because generally, people are getting wealthier, you would think that KaiOS has really strong short-term appeal whilst money is short, but then at the same time in the long term when incomes become substantial enough that people would rather have the full smartphone experience with something like Android as opposed to the cut back version here. So the only way I see KaiOS surviving long term is by slowly branching out to more premium devices and by starting to offer more and more of a comparable experience to Android and iOS. So that in itself could be pretty exciting. The last thing to bear in mind about this is that using one of these phones actually has some significant advantages over using one of these phones. The Nokia 8810 that I've got here is lighter, it's smaller, and it can last just as long if not longer than my S10. And I could also see a situation where even someone who who already owns an Android might prefer to take a KaiOS phone to a music festival or to a holiday. It's low cost means you're not too worried about losing it, and the fact that it's powerful enough to stay fully connected, whilst not being so powerful and so capable that it's distracting, might actually strike the perfect balance for some people. KaiOS could also potentially find a market as the secondary phone for someone who already owns a proper smartphone. We'll have to see. Anyways, don't forget to watch the video on Puffin OS, which is on Tech Altar's channel. And once you've seen both, do let us know in the comments below which one you think is more capable. And with that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.